I don't know if you've noticed, but democratic socialism is all the rage. You can just look at the Denver City Council for a for for an example. So Helen Raleigh has been working on this issue for a while, trying to convince people that it's not really as it is. Her book, Confucius Never Say, we talked with her before. Oh, it must have been a year or so ago. I'm trying to remember when we did that. But you're also putting together a project with the economist Paul Prentice to do what exactly? We want our project is called a workshop. It's a workshop called uh, Three Punches to Knock Down Democrat Socialism. We want to give people tools and the talking points and ideas to how to debate and convince people that Democrat Socialism is definitely a wrong idea. Now, not to repeat your entire personal story, but the reason you feel so passionately about this is because you've seen it. What what is it you saw? I lived through it, my entire family. Uh, I grew up in uh, uh, communist China. And just to give you a quick story, I grew up with food rations. Many people here probably didn't understand what the food ration is. But in China, food ration means as a little girl, I was uh, allocated a certain amount of food by the government. I can't eat more than that. And also, the allocation was based on gender. So a little boy would have four more pound rice each month than me. Four pounds more four pounds more. Wow. Yes, that what socialism is about. What do you see here now in the United States that you're here? Why is it that you're so active about this? We're, we're not going to be like that, right? That's what every other country who practice socialism said the same thing. You look at the Soviet, Soviet Union, China, Cuba, Venezuela, Pol Pot, everybody said they're going to do it differently because they know how to do it right. Nobody knows how to do it right because the idea itself is wrong. Socialism is anti-freedom and it's about the force. What do you mean it's anti-freedom? Let me, let me, and this is one of your first uh, punches in your workshop. Yes. It's called democratic socialism. It's not called communism. Mm -hmm. It's called democratic. So there's no force involved the collective votes, and if the collective votes to redistribute uh, wealth, as one of our city council members believes, well, then that's not democratic. That's not communism. That's not socialism. That's democrat. That's being a. That's democracy. No, that's like a put a, tr a lipstick on a pig and try to call that's not a pig. It is still a pig. I, mean, I apologize to the pig because it's not <laughs> fair for the pig, um, but. When they say it's a democratic, but if you look at the ideas they advocate, for example, the Medicare for all, in order for them to do that, they said that all the presidential candidates, you know, raise their hands and they're going to abolish private insurance. So if we have a Medicare for all, you don't get to choose. Even you, if you hate Medicare, you don't get to choose to have a private insurance. That is force, John. And don't just listen to the rhetoric. You really have to listen to what the policies they promote and how they want to enforce that policy. Same thing for the Green New Deal. Green New Deal sounds good, but when you actually look how they're going to implement it, even AOC's chief staff said very openly that Green New Deal is not about the climate. It's about revamping our entire social economic system. And you can choose if you don't want to, you know, you do want to eat a cow. And <laughs> to, you, you, can choose, you can say no if they want to retrofit your home. It is all about force. So there's nothing democratic about it. And just because 99 people voted to John, take your stuff away, does not make it okay. Does not make it democratic. What you're talking about is coercion is coercion is yes. coercion. Yes. And so when people use the coercive power of the state to take from somebody else and give over here, and uh, um, that, that's force. And that's, that, that that's all force. we're talking about is force. Yes. All right. You, you have another punch that you try to talk to when you're trying to talk to people about the real threat of democratic socialism. And I got to tell you, this is the one where I think we, we mm -hmm. fail is that capitalism gets confused with cronyism a yes, lot. Yes. Capitalism looks very mean. Capitalism looks heartless. It's greedy. It's all these terrible things. And uh, I have a hard time explaining to people what you think capitalism is, is not capitalism. If there's a company that's stopping competition, that's not capitalism. Mm -hmm. um, but there, there really is this hatred today of, of people who've created wealth. 
I, I find it crazy mm -hmm. that we want jobs, but we hate the people who, who create jobs. jobs. Yes. How do you how do you tell people that that the opposite of socialism is good? I think we, I think we need to rely on stories, and I think we need to. The one good way for us to compete with democratic socialism is to talk compassionately about how free markets actually benefit the poor and the disadvantaged people. And I always use myself as an example because I'm an immigrant. I came here with nothing, literally nothing. I had the less than $100 in my pocket. I didn't know anyone. I came here to go to school. I know no one and I had nothing. But look where I am now. I had two master degrees. I have a business and I'm speaking to you, talking about ideas, not afraid that even though people disagree with my ideas, but I'm not going to throw into the jail just because I have different ideas. All these come free. But you can't get kicked out of college. Oh, that's yeah. true. Too. Yeah, so that's why we need to debate those ideas, right? But it's all come down to in this, in capitalism, because no one has the full control of entire means of production, then it especially works for people who are the poorest, who are the, at the most disadvantaged, that they have a fighting chance to, to move up the economic ladder. And I look at myself as a good example and I look at the millions of immigrants. This is why we still, so many of us want to come to this country. And we have faced in this country, unfortunately, many people who were born and raised here already lost. But we knew because this is a land of opportunity. We knew that there's no one gonna stop us to moving up as long as we work hard and use God-given talent. You say that and there are people who will be listening going, Oh, that's nice, but it's more than just working hard. You need to know the right people. If you have the wrong skin color, maybe your path is a lot harder. It's not as easy. Laws are not uh, enforced equally in this country. There are some people who've, mm -hmm. who've fallen on the wrong line of the, law, of the law and they can't get back to the other side. There is, th uh, there, that image doesn't sell to everyone. I believe it. I believe that capitalism and freedom have done more to increase people's lives, increase mm -hmm. people's length of life, their health of their lives, their living conditions than any other force. Um, but people don't want to hear that. They, they know that there are other people who make a lot more money and they're being kept down. Right. And, you know, our society is not perfect. And what I would try to tell people, you know, a couple of things. One is a lot of the issues, the problems, people are not happy with our current society. If you look at the root cause of those problems, you see the government intervention was the root cause of those problems. For example, healthcare is a perfect example, right? Many of us are not happy with the increase in premiums we have to pay out of pocket. But if you look at our healthcare industry is one of the heaviest regulated industry. And if you look at the Medicare, Medicaid, you know, some of the poorest run, and especially the VA system. My father-in-law is in the yeah. VA system. He's a veteran. If you look at why those systems are so inefficient, and the root cause is, is managed by government, they starved the competition. They starved the opportunity to drive the cost down, at the same time provide the best service. You look at the area where people are most happy. Most of us are happy with our cell phones, right? And cell phones. Cell phones, yes. yes, right? And because there's a competition, there's no government manipulation, there's no government intervention. So the cell phone companies are competing to provide us the best phones. It's like a supercomputer in our hand. The best phones, at the same time, with increasingly lower the cost. So if you look at what areas make us happy and what areas make us most frustrated, I would say, those areas make us most frustrated are the, one, are the areas that have the least amount of competition, least amount of uh, private enterprise involvement. Let me try this one out on you because this is where my mind has been going lately. Is I'm, I'm seeing a shift in how Americans think. It mm -hmm. used to be that Americans saw somebody who with wealth and said, I want to be like that. Um, they want to work hard and they want to achieve. Now I see a system, instead of emulating that and, and embracing the competition, that there is a celebration, a plus that you get for whatever your victim status is. Mm -hmm. And the more victimized you have been, the, the more cultural win points you seem to get. Yes. And so the race is to celebrate and focus on 
your identity, your, yeah. uh, your victim status, this identity politics of why you've been kept down. And mm -hmm. the more we, fo we folk, whatever we focus on, we get more of. Mm -hmm. And we are focusing on, I'm being kept down instead of I'm going to go up there, I'm going to achieve. Right. And I, I've noticed in, in my lifetime, a real shift in American attitudes to embracing the victim culture. Mm -hmm. And I really worry about what that means in the future. I think it opens up the door for what you're very afraid of, socialism. Right. And that the victim Olympics, they say who, who's going to, yeah, it's a victim Olympics. The grievance industries thrive on that, is to see who's going to win the gold medal for that. And that's actually corresponding to the rise of socialism, because of the defining characteristic of socialism are envy and the greed. Right? It's not aspirational, you know, I don't want to be like you, but the only, well, I do want to be like you, but the only way I thought in, under socialism to be like you is to drag you down. We only have uh, 10 seconds. People want to get more information. Where should they go to, to see some of your work and get involved? Uh, they can check my website, HelenRaleighSpeaks.com, and I'll send them information about the workshop. HelenRaleighSpeaks.com. Helen Raleigh, thank you so much. We'll do it again soon. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you. Listen for me on K How, read me in the post, and check out the Independence Institute. We'll see you next week.